In this video, I'm hoping to demystify iterators and aggregators within make.com. When you're dealing with data within make.com, such as if you're getting lots of different roles from a Google Sheet, when these are picked up within a make.com scenario, you'll often see that they're represented as bundles. And bundles are individual data items which are individually processed within a scenario. So in this case, each bundle represents an individual row of data. It's important to understand exactly what happens when you execute these bundles. So I'm going to add in a set variable module afterwards just to add in a dummy module just so you can see the flow of what's happening. So I'm just going to call this variable name test, variable value test. I'm going to press save. I'll go back to this sheet and I'm just going to copy and paste these into a separate sheet. So we're only working with three rows of data. Now I'll press save and I'll press run once here. It's picked up data from the Google Sheet, but it has executed each of those three different times. So for example, this could be an email module or a Slack module where you're sending that data to somewhere else, and that's going to get executed individually for every single one of those. So instead of putting down test, I will now put the customer name. So I'll just write variable name and variable value of customer. I'll press save, I'll run again, and I'm clicking, and I'm using search rows here, so it's just going to pick those up every single time unless we add in other filters. So in this example here, we have each of the bundles separately. When we go and look at the execution history, we have three operations used here, and this executed three different times, and we see that the variable value is the individual name from each separate row here. So make.com is effectively getting that data from Google Sheets, and there is an iterator going on in the background. It's iterating through every single one of those items, and the flow will continue from there. I've deleted those modules, and now I'm going to actually send a Slack message for every single one of those. You're not always going to want to deal with one separate row at a time. You might want to combine values. You might want to send a summary report, for example. So in this example here, I'm going to add in a Slack module. I'm going to select create a message. I've already added in a Slack connection here, so if you do not have one, just press the add button just goes through the process for that. So I'm going to select a channel from a list and I'm just going to add in this private channel that I added in previously. And for the text I'll just write in order and then map in the order number. So I'll write customer name and then comma total price. Now I'll press save. And if I press run once it's going to run that scenario and it's going to send three different Slack messages. Now let's say instead of sending individual Slack messages we want to combine all of those into one. So what you can do here is to create a text aggregator. And this is one of the easiest to understand aggregators because it's combining all of the data into one long text string. So I'll go to add a module and type in text and then you will see text aggregator. Otherwise you can go down to tools at the bottom and then select the text aggregator function from there. What the text aggregator is going to do is it will iterate through every single one of those rows. So every single bundle and then it's going to separate each of those items. And then under show advanced, you can actually then separate each of these by a new row or a tab or whatever you want. So then under text, I'll write order and then select the customer name and then total price. I selected new rows, the row separator. When you're using an aggregator, you need to add in the source module at the start. And that will be either an iterator or a module which acts as an iterator in the background. So this Google sheets search roles effectively acts as an iterator. Now I'll press save again, press run once, and now that will have run. It searched the roles, it aggregated all the text, as you see there, and then it created the message. And you see when it aggregated all of those, it only used one operation. So that's a lot cheaper if you have a lot of roles within your Google Sheets, for example, and also it's not bombarding the Slack API, which is not a major problem, but if you are using external systems, that could be a problem. So now instead of individual messages sent to Slack, we now have one message that's sent there. A good use case for this then would either be where you are searching roles and then you're filtering by a certain date, for example, or where you were using the watch new roles module and you could have this running every single day, then it will pick up all of those new roles and then send you a summary of those. So then within the Slack, you can add in whatever you want. You could type, here is your daily summary of orders and from there press save. Then when this runs, you could run this on a scheduled basis, for example, then you will get your Slack message from there. That's a text aggregator. There are some others. For example, you could add in a numeric aggregator. So I'll go add a module and then go to tools scroll down and then numeric aggregator then aggregate function there's a bunch of different ones like average sum or count so i'm going to select sum and then the value of that will be the sum of the total price that's just going to add up all of the order values for the day and then in the text i'm going to select the result from this numeric aggregator and then press save save and then press run once and now we'll go to slack and you see the total orders for the day 15695 and that was the sum of the total price here. 
to sum up an aggregator at a high level, it's one which converts multiple bundles into one bundle. In the case of a text aggregator, it's going to combine multiple bundles into one text string. In the case of a numeric aggregator, it will convert it all into a number. That's an aggregator in a nutshell. I will be going through the array aggregators later on in this video. It's a little bit more advanced, so before we do that, I'll jump into using iterators. Before I explain how iterators work, I want to show you the data structures for arrays and collections so that you'll be able to identify what you can iterate. Let's use Gmail as a good example here, where I'm just going to watch for emails. I'm going to press play. In this case, it's picked up an email from Anthropic where it has an array of attachments. The email looked like this and we have two attachments at the very bottom. When that email was picked up in make.com, this is how it looks. So we have an attachment array. So we have attachments and array and we have a collection underneath that. To give you a very quick rundown of data items versus arrays versus collections, a data item is this within make.com. It's an individual key and a value pair. It's very easy to map a data item from one module to another one. For example, if you were to go to the set variable module, you go to variable value, and then you could very easily map, let's say the text content or the subject directly into that variable because it's a very simple data item. Things are a little bit more complicated when it comes to arrays and collections. When you look at the data structures here and go down through them, you see that under labels, we have an array. So the actual label of the email was marked as important. So there can be multiple labels for an individual email. And this array is a basically a numbered list. It's a dynamic list of lots of different labels that you could apply to an email. For attachments, there's a similar numbered list of attachments. It's a dynamic list. So there could be lots and lots of different attachments. So it's stored within this array here. And you see each different item is numbered. We could then iterate through every single one of those and upload those all to Google Drive, for example. But when we go into them, we see we have a collection. A collection is a grouping of individual data items or fields within make.com's data structures, whereas an array is effectively a numbered list of items. So within these arrays, we can very easily iterate through those as necessary. Let's say we want to upload each of those to Google Drive. So we'll go to Google Drive, we'll select upload a file, I'll select select from list, my drive, I'll choose my folder. So I've added in just a test folder no location here, but we do not have a mapping for any of these files. Before we use an iterator, here's a little trick that you could use in some cases, which is to specify the individual key. So you go to file name and you see there's a gap between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Here you can enter in an index. So this would be the first item from the array. And then that's the file name from the first item. You could go to data, and select the data from the first index of that array as well. So that would effectively be the first attachment. I'll press save and let's try and run that. I'll press run once and it's running and there we go. It looks like it has correctly loaded the link. Okay, that looks good. That approach of just hard coding in this first key, number one into here would work perfectly if you're in a use case where you just know that you only wanna take the first attachment or the first item from that array. In a lot of cases, you're going to want to iterate through them all and upload every single one of them. In that case, we should use an iterator. Now, Gmail does have this option to iterate through attachments, but I'm just going to use a regular iterator here just to explain the concept of using a standard iterator node here. So then within this, you're going to select the array. So go down and look for the attachments and you're going to select this attachments array. So that's going to be the attachments and you have these square brackets left and right and then press save. Let's unlink this, press save, and then see what happens. We're just gonna press save anyway. I'll press choose where to start, select all emails, so we reprocess those emails again. Press run anyway, and here we go. Perfect, so we have what we need. We have the file name and the data. Now, if we link that together up with Google Drive, then we can map those. You see it has automatically mapped from the iterator. So instead of just doing that, I'm just gonna press map to see exactly what happened here. And what it's doing is, it's mapping the file name from the iterator and the data from the iterator. It's a very common mistake that beginners to make.com will try and map back to the original module over here. Whereas you need to map to the iterator because what's gonna happen is when you run this, press save and press run, what happens here is it picks up the email, it's gonna go to this iterator and execute that every single time that there is an attachment. So let's press save, we'll press run once again and let's see that happen in action. So it's picked up that email, and then it's individually uploading those. We see two bubbles, 
So the flow control there was it started with one bundle and then if you have multiple bundles it's going to repeat the flow for every single bundle. When in doubt just look at the illustration in the middle here. We have one flow moving out to multiple flows. This is an important concept to understand. When you're forking out this flow it's going to repeat that flow for every single bundle that you have coming out of that iterator. And if you want to converge all of those bundles into one then we go full circle all the way back to using an aggregator. Because as I mentioned earlier this Google Sheets effectively functions as an iterator because there are multiple bundles here. And in the case of the numeric aggregator we were aggregating all of those into one. So even though there were multiple bundles we ended up only sending one Slack message at the end. To give you a bird's eye view of an example of this in action will be one of these blogging systems that we have on our channel. And this is where we create an article from a topic and we want to generate an article outline and then iterate through every single one of those sections. So we have an iterator which is iterating through every section. It's right in the article section using AI, it's using Claude. And then at the very end it's going to aggregate all of that data together into one long article. After we've created every single section we go back into one flow again and upload one blog post at the very end. This grey shade in here is a visual cue to explain that this is the part of the workflow that's going to keep repeating for every bundle that's within this iterator. And finally we have an array aggregator which seems quite complicated but it's a really powerful tool once you understand how to use it. Let's take this original basic order Google Sheet that we had at the start of the video. I'm going to press save and this is just searching those rows so we're just going to end up with multiple bundles once we run that. As a result of that we have 10 bundles representing each individual row. As a very very simple example let's say that I want to take all of these orders and the total price and dump those into a separate Google Sheet. I could use this add a row module I've selected my sheet here, I'm going to select the sheet name, table contains headers and from there I can manually map in the order ID and the total price and press save. Press save again. Now I'll press run once. It's searching for all of those rows, so it's searched all the rows. Now it's individually going to call Google Sheets for every single one of those rows. So now it's copied all the data from there to there. But we've used 10 operations We've hit the Google Sheets API 10 different times and that's incredibly inefficient. Instead we'll use the Google Sheets bulk update or bulk add rows. So we'll go to Google Sheets, bulk add rows. From here we need to select our spreadsheet. From here I'll go file name keywords, press OK. Hopefully it should find the relevant spreadsheet. And it did. So we'll go to sheet name. You can press, you can uncheck this map button here and then select your sheet. Column range, select A to Z. And then rows, you want to map the rows and press save. Now we have this bulk add rows module created. We'll go to add a module, array aggregator, and then the target structure type for this will be the Google Sheet rows. So it'll be the target structure type is the data structure from this module over here to the right. And then as for values, we'll then select the order ID and the total price and press save and then go back to bulk add rows. And then under rows, we're going to just dump in the array. That's the array from this array aggregator. So I'm going to run this and then I'll explain exactly what happened afterwards. So now I have nothing within this orders received spreadsheet. I'll press run once. It's picked up the Google Sheet rows. Within this array aggregator it bunched all of those into one array and then it used this Google Sheets bulk add rows to add all of those rows together. So that's pretty cool. What the array aggregator did there is it took data from each individual bundle and it combined them into one specific array. It's done a very similar thing as the other aggregators have done. They've taken lots of bundles and combined them into one bundle and within that bundle we have this array which is a numbered list of values. So we have array, values, two values and this is in the exact format that we need for this Google Sheets bulk add rows module. So the idea of defining this target structure type is fantastic. Then you can simply add in your values from there. So that's a very practical example of using an array aggregator within a scenario to massively save on operations and to really reduce the amount of API calls that you need to do in order to run a scenario. Because this will be much more operationally efficient, will be cheaper to run, and if you have large amounts of roles it will be much faster to run. If you want to get way ahead with make.com then check out the link in the description to our community where you'll get access to our full make.com masterclass as well as all of our other courses. You'll get access to all of our automation templates. You can join hundreds of fellow automators through our online discussion boards and our packed schedule of live workshops. Thanks for watching.